All right, so um, let's see. I am here today with uh, Jonathan Donkenbring, one of our uh, biennial artists. Um, and we are gonna talk a little bit more about his work, uh, Vertical Altered Concept, um, and some of the other work that he does. And with, we will just start again, if you wanted to talk a little bit about your practice in general, um, kind of like how you approach your work and some of your general ideas, we can start there. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, first of all, thank you for letting me be a part of this exhibit. Um, I, I really enjoy these types of shows actually, because I like to know what else is going on other than just, you know, my little circle of people that I talk to and I know what they're doing. Um, so thank you. Um, no problem. Uh, well, first of all, um, this particular work that's in the exhibition uh, is what I would consider to be a part of, ser part of a series of works. Uh, it sort of came out of this idea of building things that were sort of basic, almost liturgical type furniture. Um, the, the sort of fascination with uh, objects and how we use them um, on a daily basis, as well as in a more sort of ideological way, is, has been important in my work for a long time. Um, more recently, the, the sort of issue of uh, this idea of like living with an object has become more important. And so th there were all these sort of things flying around in my head in the studio that maybe didn't always mesh together, right? Um, I, I have a lot of different bodies of work, I would say. Um, and so I, I sort of set out within the last couple of years to, to try to make a series of works that, that can act in relation to one another, I guess one would say. Um, and so in this instance, uh, with the vertical altar concept in this particular show, uh, it has a series of what I would almost consider to be other pieces that are associated with it. Um, I lovingly refer to them as accessories. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that feels appropriate for our, our time and place currently in society. I don't know why, but um and so yeah i i wanted to figure out a way to to sort of mesh some of the different things that i was doing in the studio together in a meaningful way um this is also sort of all within the context of uh within the last i'd say five to six years in the studio i've, I've been thinking about my work in a very different way um for a long time, everybody has always sort of associated me with this kind of like, oh, you make these sort of like beautiful minimalist objects, right? Um, which I don't really consider them to be minimalistic, but that's, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's art historical issues that I have. Um, but uh, <laughs> I really wanted them to, to have more than one life, I guess in my mind um they, they don't have to be this sort of like singular one shot kind of deal right um i wanted to make these things that, that work together um and like i was saying in the background of all this I'm, I'm kind of thinking of it as uh all of my work really really being this large sort of long-term uh potential installation, I guess. Um, I come from more of a sort of installation mindset in my studio practice. Um, I think a lot about uh, truly site-specific works, not just, you know, what a lot of people call site-specific works, which I think is overused. Um, <laughs> for a long time, I was dealing with uh, interventions within particular architecture and dealing with the history of that, and uh, sort of looking at it from this sort of anthropological uh, sort of lens, right? Um, mostly better to understand how people use space and how they relate to it on a daily basis kind of thing. Um, so I, I sort of came from that background as well as sort of a painting background. Um, and 
around the time of grad school, I, I really started thinking more about object making and, and what that looks like, what that could be for someone, you know, pra part of it practically, just speaking, like, you know, it's hard to be able to go somewhere and make a site specific installation. Those opportunities aren't, you know, people aren't knocking on your door to do that <laughs> generally. Yeah. Um, so, so I started really thinking about, you know, objects and what that means now today, culturally, um, not so much in an art context, but uh, I'm more interested in the outside world, if, if we want to make those divisions. Uh, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's when uh, the studio practice really changed and uh, sort of where a lot of this work is coming from. So uh, you can see, you know, in the background, uh, behind you, <laughs> um, the the small pod type uh, objects. Um, those are directly coming out of that object practice. Um, sort of this uh, fascination and uh, almost obsession with uh, handheld devices within current society. Um, what those do, what they, how they change our behavior uh for me they they've really become these sort of fascinating sort of fetishized objects right. um and obviously i'm sort of taking that to this almost all new level right um I've, I've made them out of many different materials um everything from jade to hematite to concrete to lead to whatever but um and and all those material choices obviously have have reason behind them, but um, but yeah, those those were specifically started because I, I I found myself just you know sort of like reflecting on my own uh, uh, sort of daily practices or ritualistic behavior almost mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, my relationship to those objects was uh, troublesome to me. Um, right. It still is. Um, and I think that's why I've continued to make them. Um, I started making them back in, uh, I think the first one was maybe like 2006. Okay. Um, so, so, it's been, been a, so it's been a while uh, and, yeah. and I try to, uh, I, I have a tendency to make it at least a couple of a year. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, that was like, um, a conversation that we had like in the gallery too and you know the piece was set up uh because i think it's <clears throat> interesting because it's i think obvious what these pieces are but yet not you know what i mean yeah <laughs> so um yeah i always refer to them as uh a, really a lot of my work but i think particularly in the, the work that sort mm -hmm. of has a nod to technology right mm -hmm. um i I refer to them as almost these sort of like slightly alien feeling objects. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, I recognize them, I think, but right. they're like slightly off or like odd in some way. Right. And we're, I, yeah, I think there's a feeling of just not quite being sure. But I think a part of the viewer kind of knows, like, I think that's how I approach it. Like, um, <clears throat> I can see, <clears throat> like, I want to pick them up because you know that's Everyone the first does. reaction that you have because we're so used to having you know the you know our phones and those objects in our hands um so i think when you see them that you really becomes kind of part of uh interacting with this piece is that kind of i don't know if you call it like tactile tactile reaction but that like yeah. you want to kind of know how this feels we're so accustomed to that feeling with you know yeah. the weight of our phones and you know how we handle them but um i know you talked a little bit about minimalism and it kind of sounds like <clears throat> you would rather not be um put into one specific category but i know it comes up like in your statement um as well and like your piece in particular in the in the um galleries is in a room that uh, is with other abstracted artworks. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that is kind of a recurring theme within that room is kind of this 
relationship with technology versus um, <clears throat> maybe like handicraft or things that, you know, what we maybe would have done before we became super obsessed with technology. So I think there is a lot of play back and forth between these two ideas within this space. Um, so if that gives you a better idea of kind of like the context within your, that your work is in. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know if you could talk a little bit more about this relationship that you have with minimalism um, or abstraction. Oh, <laughs> or what both a together. Word. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love what we call minimalist art, right? Um, historically speaking. Um, I mean, one of the main galleries I show at is in Marfa, Texas. And so <laughs> just like the capital Mecca of minimalist art, right? Um, but for me, uh, it, it's not, I'm not so interested in making work that is in relation to that work, at least not consciously, right? Um, I'm more interested in the, what I call a, a sort of like residual effects of that art movement. And I mean, I, I think you can even take it back farther to just sort of like more sort of like minimal modernist type work and uh, all the way back to Malevich and you know people like that and um, Bauhaus design and things right. of that nature, right? So there's a much longer line there in history I would say mm -hmm. um, but for me it's it always comes back to what what do these aesthetics how do they live in just everyday culture not within the art world right yeah um, and to me that's much more interesting um, and maybe that's sort of like my what I call kind of like slightly reverse anthropology sort of mindset <laughs> Um, I, I'm more interested in how those things have transformed culture, right? Um, and how they've sort of infiltrated uh, really almost every part of our life now. Really, um, I think specifically too, like that design, <clears throat> the history of design, and like that background in design, and how it really is about um, changing the way that people live. I think mm -hmm. from even from the point of making like how can yeah like yeah well it, see like i find it fascinating that uh you know generally minimalist type art is not uh super well received by the general public <laughs> i would say or very popular um yet I, I find it pretty ironic that you know these things that we we carry around it with us every day or uh we watch TV on or we drive around or whatever. I don't think a lot of people realize how much those things are actually related to those artists <laughs> and their ways of thinking and designing. Yeah. Um, so for me personally, uh, with that type of uh, visual language, um, one of the reasons I was, I was drawn to it is I'm, I'm pretty interested in, uh, this idea of sort of a blank screen, right? So, the, or this idea of nothingness or the lack of something. Um, and that's, that probably comes from uh, just sort of uh, growing up in a, a Christian household. And uh, uh, I, I, I make this weird direct correlation that I'm, I'm sure most people think is weird, but um, between this idea of like, uh, it started out as a blank, television like television screen right so i was making these sculptures that basically looked like flat panel tvs um but they were either completely painted the same color as the wall um or they had just a black screen or just a blue screen or something like that um so obviously a relation to painting and things like that too can't be avoided but um but more so i was interested in this idea of like that there's something behind that blankness that, you know, we, we think that something that there's nothing there or that there's this blankness there, but in fact, there is something behind it. Right. Okay. So like when, you know, my phone is, you know, not actively on, there's still something happening in the background. 
yeah. right? And so I, <laughs> I make this sort of association with this idea of faith within religions. Okay. So that there's like a faith in the, this sort of like technology that there is something behind <clears> it <throat> and that there's a point behind it. <laughs> yeah. That's really, I mean, that's interesting. Um, I kind of, I like that, like uh, that way of thinking about it. And I think like I, you know, this idea that, you know, it's a vertical altar and you have these objects on there. So I think it's clear, like, you know, that message, but I love the idea of um, talking about, you know, the kind of faith that we do have in this technology and all of these other, like you, like you would say, probably the objects, our objects, how much faith do we put in our objects every day? Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, like, listening to you talk about um, the relationship between like minimalist art and design and don't, isn't there like a saying about like good design is good because people won't notice it or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think there's a level of truth to that. <laughs> if you, yeah, a good design will be something that people won't notice because it's good enough that it yeah. kind of seamlessly infiltrates our lives and we, and we can use it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I wanted, yeah, to hear a little bit more about kind of like your relationship with the, um, religious kind of aspects of, um, of what you were, you know, this particular work, it sounds like that is something yeah. that is kind of a running theme kind of throughout then your, some of your practice. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I always preface it by saying, you know, I, I grew up in a Midwestern, I mean, I grew up in and around Kansas City most of my life, um, sort of Christian, uh, but more in the sort of like televangelist sort of Christian way kind of household. Um, so going to like those types of events and things like that. So, um, and of course, you know, also through the lens of a white male, right? Um, uh, my relationship to religion and Christianity in particular is this extremely complicated thing, which I, I think yeah, I mean, a lot of people's are, especially if right. you grew up in that particular culture, right? Um, and you know, a lot of people will look at my work or look at some writing about my work or things that I've said about my own work and like think that like, oh, I'm like, you know, bashing Christianity or like I, I hate that or I'm anti-religion or whatever. And that's totally not true at all. <laughs> uh, I think they're missing the point, but um, I think it's, uh, like I said, it's much more complicated than that. Right. And I think, you know, as, as I think all artists yeah. do, right? Like, all of our work really are just a giant self-portrait uh, in reality. Um, I mean, I think like when I look at particularly like the altarpiece too, <clears throat> like I wouldn't, I mean, I agree. Like I don't feel like there is anything that like you're not, I think critiquing religion in any certain way, mm -hmm. but instead like using these visual cues, yeah, to draw these kind of um, comparisons to all these different aspects of our, our culture and yeah, how we and I, go about our day. Yeah, so for me, I mean, uh, I, I mean, there are certain parts of particular religions that obviously I have issues with, <laughs> um, but uh, it's, not, it's not so cut and dry. Yeah. Um, well, I know I you talked to in your um, statement about just, in general kind of like exploration of ideologies and different ide yeah. ideologies within our culture um and how do you know as a society how do we kind of create these things yeah i i think for me the the my real interest is this sort of melding that happens especially in a uh <laughs> at least in terms of like a Western, you know, US culture, um, there's so many different voices, there's so many different things going on, right? Um, and I, I'm sort of fascinated by these moments of weird intersection, right? right. Um, and I think they happen all the time, right? So like, even like, 
friends that I, you know, have that are still, you know, very much practicing, you know, quote unquote, good Christians and, you know, things like that. Like, um, there's this weird intersection with like, uh, for instance, like, you know, some churches now take, uh, tithing through like smartphone apps and things like that. Like that just like blows my mind. And, um, and I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised by that. Maybe it, once again, this says more about probably how I, how I see religion. Right. But, uh, but yeah, so that, that's kind of a jumping off point for me for, for a lot of that sort of thought in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, is sort of recognizing those moments of sort of awkwardness or tension yeah. or potential tension, maybe even, um, you know, it's like when you see a news story about like, oh, this televangelist just bought a jet. Like, you know, right. it's like, wait, what? Like he has a private jet. Like, yeah. Like do those, those <laughs> things kind of don't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> something feels off here. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you familiar with like uh, the work of um, Leibach and like the NSK? It's like a group of Slovenian artists and they're actually really interested in like Malevich, but like one of the things that they did in their work and I kind of feel like it is reflected in your work too, where it's just like this combination of combining like different kinds of symbology, some, some like symbols and everything in their work to create these pieces where you're kind of just like, you're just not sure. Like you're just talking about these two, like these kind of contradictions of ideology and they use symbols to kind of create that feeling in the viewer where you're just like, I feel like this is really meaningful because you're seeing all of these things, you know, that yeah. in our daily life contain meaning, but together they don't make sense. Does that make sense? So yeah, so actually that's great. Um, I am not familiar with their exact work that sounds familiar, but not completely sure. I'll have to look that up. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not one of those artists that's like, you know, freaked out by other people making work similar to theirs. <laughs> I, I actually think it's fascinating. Yeah, uh, they, they were like, I mean, I think the Leibach is a band and they're still active, but they think they okay. were really active like in the eighties and nineties. Um, I don't think that. Oh. See, now I'm excited to go look at that up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, to speak to that a little bit. Uh, so for me, one of the people always say, well, like, you know, you, you're working in all these different ways, right? So like I, re I released a sound piece on vinyl a couple of years ago and things like that, right? So like I'm working in a lot of different methods and um, it's, you know, that's why it always makes it complicated when people say, oh, what do you do? It's like, uh a little bit of everything <laughs> it, it's you know um but the thing that ties all the work to me together <laughs> is really the the feeling or the the way that it makes uh or the conversations that it starts and things like that so like uh you had mentioned that you, you know you really want to pick up those pieces right, right. um first of all people do all the time <laughs> <laughs> um and uh just so that people know too, I actually generally, when I make those pieces, I actually carry them around as kind of a dummy for a long period of time in my pocket, usually for at least a few weeks before I would ever actually consider showing them. Um, but for me, that sort of like visceral reaction to the work right. is, is actually what I'm interested in and the dialogue that happens because of the work. Um, for me, the objects, whether it be uh, something that looks more like a traditional painting, like some of the things that I'm working on now, um, or the fabric that's in the piece in this show, um, it, it, it's really not about the object for me in a weird way. It's, it's about what it does. Um, I always refer to my work essentially just as props in a larger in sort of a larger conversation that I want to have it's the objects themselves are fun and I love making them obviously uh but it, it's really the the reactions that they elicit and things like that that I'm interested in um so you know I I always say that you know 
the best compliment that I can get. And I actually did get this one time from <laughs> someone that saw my work and they emailed me, I think it was three or four years later and said, Hey, I'm still thinking about this piece that I saw. And yeah. to yeah. me, that's pretty much the biggest compliment I could ever get about my right. work, regardless of what they're thinking about it or anything like that. I, I want the work to be haunting. It's made yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, I want it to, uh, I don't necessarily want it to be off-putting. I, I, I do want it to have tension, though. Right. I want there to be that tension of, hey, I want to grab this. Hey, uh, I've had a lot of people. Actually, the most common reaction that I get from people from my work is either, oh, it's really pretty, <laughs> or, uh, which is fine. I mean, that's great. People like art for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, or they're extremely angry by it. Um, I, I've even had professors of mine tell me how much my work angers them, um, which once again, I, I think as an artist, I think is a huge compliment. Yeah, it's a reaction, like you're, it's, you're it's creating this emotion. One of the reasons I think it's funny is because I think it shows more about how we currently think about art and like the, that art should always be this like pleasurable experience. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I don't think that's true. I think it's true sometimes. Yeah. Um, but, and sometimes I, I make work that I would consider to be fairly pleasurable. Um, but more times than not, no, I, I'm, I'm poking at people. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are all good things. Yeah, I mean, uh, for art to do, I think that's what art needs to be doing. And I agree that like, I've had this discussion with a couple other artists who were like, um, you know, an emotional reaction to art isn't always just like, oh, it's pretty, but like, you know, evoking other kinds of reactions, you know, is, is good is what, you know, we want art to do and what we yeah. want artists to be doing. So yeah, I think that's great. Um, I'm going to just ask a couple other questions that I have um, asked all of our artists that I've talked to as part of this series. Um, the first one being, this is the uh, exhibition is the Biennial, Mountain Plains Biennial, and we're obviously focusing on artists within this region um, in the center of the United States. Uh, and one of the conversations we've been having is, you know, what does it mean to to be an artist in this region? Is there anything particular about, you know, working and living within the mountain plain states that um, means something to you as a as a working artist? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a hard question for me. I um I, I definitely think that you know, one's environment always plays a role in what they make, right? right. Um, I wouldn't deny that at all. Um, it's just, I think maybe for the, the type of work that I make, at least at this point, it probably doesn't play a huge role. Um, I do think that it, for me, it's probably more important that I grew up in this region. And I think those formative years, uh, it probably plays a role. Um, I, I think, you know, for me personally, I've always been sort of drawn to wide open nothingness. <laughs> Some people would refer to it, um, to, to open space. Um, yeah. that's why I like, you know, one of my favorite places I've ever been to is West Texas, um, because it's basically the middle of nowhere and, you know, <laughs> um, it's just desert. Um, there, there is something certainly appealing to that. And I think it, I think people looking at my work can probably see some influence there. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it probably goes back to that idea of, uh, sort of nothingness or what that, what people think that means. Right. Um, I mean, what were you saying it, It's like when people yeah. always say like, uh, when, when I tell them that I grew up around Kansas city and they're like, Oh, you're from Kansas. And I'm like, well, first of all, I was born in Missouri, but <laughs> Uh, that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it it does mean something. I'm just not sure what it means. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think it's true. Like we're all. I think we're influenced in by places and ways that we 
can't really yeah um communicate, you know? especially too because i mean i've lived other places you know at least for short periods of time and um uh spend a lot of time in like central america and things uh places like that um because my wife studies uh my architecture and uh you know so places like that also for me like play as big of a role as anything um so yeah what it means it, for me it, it's probably smaller scale it's more about relationships yeah. between people mm -hmm. right um even people that no longer actually live in this region but did at one time right. um and I, I think that's natural especially since we live in such a sort of like you know accessible culture now right um like part part of the sort of like subcultures i would consider myself to be part of or you know friend groups or things like that like they're not necessarily geographic based i okay. guess it's be yeah i mean it's becoming less and less i think which in some ways maybe is a little sad but the what i'm sorry it, it in some ways is actually maybe a little bit sad that that <laughs> is the case but um, or maybe that's just my own paranoia. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the last question that I've been asking all the artists that I've been talking to is uh, in relation to like our current, um, I don't know, I guess the COVID-19 pandemic and how people have responded to that or how um, kind of changes in the way that we go through our daily routine have affected like how we're working and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, just kind of curious if there's anything in particular that you've done either because of uh, the pandemic or in response to it, or, or if it's not affected your work. Um, I mean, it certainly affected my day job work a lot. Right. Um, but as far as studio practice goes, um, I would say it's more, conceptually um it it honestly this is some of the things with this in terms of sort of like these almost slightly apocalyptic kind of feeling events right, right. um have always sort of played a role in my work <laughs> and so like for instance like i used to and I actually plan on making more of these so maybe it has affected me in some ways it's sort of brought this back up in my mind but um for a while i was making these drawings that uh were essentially uh kind of uh drafting like drawings of uh these structures throughout the landscape that uh were essentially for viewing the apocalypse uh, and so it'd be interesting to see that you know <laughs> these uh these sort of thoughts are always in my head <laughs> that that sort of like conspiracy aspect of my brain is like you know always on you know crank to 10. <laughs> yeah, that's so I mean that's interesting because it's been so like I feel like uh I mean conspiracy conspiracy theories and these other kind of uh conversations have been so overblown almost mm -hmm. you know these conversations like all of a sudden I feel like just exploded on the internet about you know what is really happening yeah yeah um yeah and see to me those those things are always things that i'm kind of thinking about and you know i'm a pretty paranoid person to begin with so like you know i don't believe 90 percent of what i hear on the news anyway probably so uh so so yeah it, it's just sort of amplified that slightly i would say um but yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting time to live in, uh, yeah. and not even just with the COVID stuff, but you know, a lot of other issues going on. Yeah, I mean, um, twenty twenty. Yeah, un unfortunately, uh, I guess the the sort of anthropologist or historian side of my thinking, uh, you know, basically is just sort of I automatically just sort of think back to like all the other times throughout history that we know of that these sort of events have happened yeah. or concerns have come out or right. um and for me it's it's about acknowledging that yeah. and maybe that's a maybe that's a way for me to uh 
find some comfort on a daily basis is like, yeah, a lot of this kind of like scary stuff has happened before yeah. and we're still here. <clears throat> right. Um, not to say that that couldn't change this then, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it's, yeah, it's an interesting time. Um, yeah. I, I do think though that, uh, it, my, my first instinct is to, is to think about, you know, how can artists, uh, help get through this time as right. well as uh, be a, a part of the solution culturally for a lot of other things going on. Um, right. You know, how do we move forward? Um, not just harping on the past. Yeah. Um, but I think like, I mean, when acknowledging you the past is important, but, right. but you know, how do we move forward? I think like you were commenting earlier about just this idea of like how you want your work to spark conversation. And I think that's like a big part of, um, yeah, how we, I think artists are a big part of how we start these conversations right now and how we approach what's happening in, in our, in yeah. our culture and being able to talk about it and acknowledge it. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and for me too, the, I mean, because I work in a, in an art museum, as my day job um i think it's our our job as you know museum or gallery folks to to really figure out how to get more exposure to this work I right would say. to be responsive to be able to like yeah because you know what's happening and yeah you know because artists like myself and a lot of these other artists like we can we can be you know out there screaming at the sky all day right. but if nobody's listening right then yeah if you don't <laughs> if there's no platform the point? there's no place to to have that you know have yeah. the work or have that conversation yeah so you know arts organizations you know everybody's like oh is this the end of like museums and blah 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 like, <laughs> like no we've never needed them more yeah. like no <laughs> no it's yeah it's kind of scary i think you know that larger conversation about our arts organizations and you know how are how are we going to make it through like some of these things and you know i agree that it is important. Thank you.